Jonah Comstock, editor in chief of Farm Forum. I'm here at Car TCR in Boston, and I'm joined by Greg Diener, CEO of iCell Gene Therapeutics. Hey, Greg, thanks for chatting. Thank yes, happy to be so. So, tell me a little bit about yourself and about iCell. Yeah, so iCell Gene Therapeutics is a Car T company, and what we try to do is patent what we think is going to be best in class cars. Then we go to China. We demonstrate the proof of concept in China. And once we're confident that we're going to be successful, we bring it back into the U.S. and we file our IDs. Interesting. We actually heard something at the conference of uh, um, analyst report saying that a huge number of clinical trials happening in, uh, in cell and gene right now are happening in China. Right. So the reason why they're happening in China is if, if you go to the U.S., you have to file an IND, which costs millions of dollars and takes several years to do. In China, you just have to get a single hospital to agree that you can run your study as an investigator-initiated study. And it's much less expensive than a full IND program in the U.S. And so you find out whether your car works or not and whether it's worth the investment in, in relatively inexpensively. And then once you're confident that it's going to work, that it's worth spending the money to file the IND. That makes sense. So tell me a little bit about this this landscape right now in cell and gene. It really feels like a bull rush and, and like a you know a very kind of uh, charged with possibilities. Right. So yes, it is. And I think one of the things that's exciting in the conference is autoimmune. So early on, what they demonstrated is that cars were developed for cancer. You know, the next promise is can you treat all the patients with autoimmune disease? You know, the problem with autoimmunity is cell memory. So, you know, the same reason why your body recognizes COVID antibodies and then fights against them, when it sees them in the future, the problem is when your body starts attacking your own body cells, that you're in this perpetual state of inflammation and it never stops attacking itself due to cell memory. So we actually have 18 patients we've tested in China, uh, 13 for lupus, the longest patient has been four years, and what our data shows so far, and the reason why you want to go into China, so are we going to have the same you know, cytokine storm problems and autoimmune that we had in cancer? The answer is no, because it appears the cytokine storm is due to the tumor burden, not, not due to the car itself. So we've had no CRS above one of these 18 patients. The other question that you have is, you know, if you wipe out all the B cells and all their plasma cells, because we have the CD19 and BCMA card. Um, does that lead to infections? The answer is no. We've had you know, only one grade one UTI other than COVID. And the reason for that is that is very quickly, your innate immune system and your T cell rebound once we stop the immunosuppressants. We offer IgG in the interim, so we don't have problems with infections until the B cells come back, which is about 90 days. And then the IG comes back, which is about 152, 150 days up to eight months. Wow. So you mentioned this move from oncology into immuno, immunology. Right. Um, the other thing I hear a lot about at this show is the, the push into solid tumors in oncology. Right. That's been very resistant up till now to, to cars. It maybe seems TCRs might have a better bet. But do you do anything in that space? What do you see? We, we, we have some early data, which is pretty promising in that space. But, you know, our, as they said today, is that in, in the conference, solid tumors is going to be difficult. And so the easier places where we think we can win quickly is autoimmune, because the autoimmune data has a, you don't have that difficult tumor burden. So you get a, a good response rate without having to you know, overcome that tumor microenvironment. And it's really well tolerated. Which, which it's not yet proven in solid tumors, if you can penetrate that, will you create that cytokine storm? So we feel like it's the less risk, higher benefit to patients option is autoimmune today. Having said that, we do have patents on T cell malignancies and AML, and we are going to move forward with those side of these. So as exciting as the science is, obviously there's also a lot of conversation about the logistics, the uh, business models. You know, how do we how do we kind of move to this transformative therapy and make sure we actually have the means to to get into patients? Yeah. 
So one of the things that I'm personally excited about, is, so I will tell you the key issue with cars today is manufacturing. You know, if you take a look at the past, since 2018, there's been like 30,000 cars made globally. If you look at last year, it's about 15,000. If you start just take a look at the U.S. alone and moderate to severe autoimmune diseases, and if you say people with, there's a million people out there in the U.S. with B-cell mediated autoimmune diseases, they're failing their current therapies. So if you come out with something with a promise for a long-term remission, let's say for lupus nephritis, you can have 70,000 patients that want that. So the the ability to make cars and make them quickly, which I was excited to hear in the conference the first day that you know they're getting this down to two to three days turnaround. You know, so it was taking four weeks. So if you have a single clean room, it takes four weeks, you can do 12 cars in a clean room. If you can do it in three days, then you can make a hundred cars in that same clean room. So that's gonna open it up for autogamous. And then there is the promise of allergenic, which hasn't been realized yet, but everybody's hopeful about that. And then even in vivo cars, which is equally and even more exciting. Wow. Yeah, so that would be, uh, in vivo would be like autogenic, but you don't have to take the cells out and then work on them and bring them back. Correct. And, and, and I will tell you that I'll just, my, I am not the expert on that, so I like coming to these and listening to very smart people, smarter than I am, talk through that and why this is a good promise and how they're breaking through. I, I'm excited about the money, amount of money that's been invested into these different manufacturing by a, a lot of really wise, smart investors who are going to unlock this potential not only for patients, but also for companies like ours that will benefit from that in the future. I want to open it up to you. Um, anything we haven't talked about yet that you think is interesting or more important or exciting? Yeah, so there, there's um, one or two things. I do think, by the way, the thing that we are not spending enough time about is patents. There's been mm. the weird thing about cell therapy patents. Is we filed most of our patents in 2015, and it takes about eight to 10 years for patents to get approved. Most of ours have now been approved, but for a lot of companies, there are some companies that are violating somebody else's approved patents if they would commercialize, but you don't do that for clinical trials. So I think what's what's going to be interesting in the future is how the intellectual property in cell therapy kind of emerges. And that is going to pick, I think, some companies that are going to be successful versus those that aren't because they have the idea. Because they're, this is such a kind of explosion of interest. There's so many different targets and, and, and you know possible kind of ways to work on it that th this gold rush has sort of led to an overlap in, in IP that really hasn't become obvious yet because of the speed of the patent process. Y is that yes. About right? Yes. And so what I would say is that um, in, in CAR, you know, like when a lot of people filed patents in, let's say, 2015. So are those patents going to be granted or not? So some people didn't expect patents to be granted that were. And so, you know, and do you, if you have a good idea, do you wait eight years to see if your competitor's patent was approved or not, or do you move forward with your good idea? And so a lot of people have moved forward with their good ideas, and then other people's patents have gotten approved. And that's one thing I don't think that's discussed enough within the cell oh, That's really interesting. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. Um, if you have time for one more question, sure. the business models. Um, you know, when, in the case where these therapists do try to be curative, um, and, and you've got sort of the question of how do you pay for a curative uh, therapy, how do you compare it to one that a patient might have to take for the rest of their lives? Um, how, how do you make the systems be ready for that um, kind of paradigm shift? Um, what, what do you think about that? What are you seeing and hearing? Do you think we're close to figuring it out? Well, so, um, you know, in the U.S., there's ICER, which is similar to NICE in the U.K. And what, what, they, what they both rely on is quality-adjusted life years. Okay, and so what that says that if, if somebody's in perfect health, that would be a, a one. If somebody's dead, that would be a zero. And so they take a utility value for where the people are on the disease and then where they are after you after they take your medication so um 
So if you take a look at most chronic diseases are between like 0.6 and 0.7 for the, let us use the autoimmune. Um, and I sure did a model on this on lupus. And so then people that are in remission are going to be 0.8 or 0.9. So the nice thing about CARS versus chronic beds, especially for autoimmune, is if you use it once, you never use it again. So therefore, with a lot of chronic meds, it's are people persistent with their meds? So we don't have that problem with our, if you use it once, you're persistent forever. And then, and then there's a question is to make this, let's say a $500,000 car, cost effective. What, what do you need to do that? And so in the US, they're willing to pay about $100,000 to $150,000 for a quality. Okay, that's, that's ICER's guidelines. And so if we think that for autoimmune, if we can keep people in remission for three to five years, it will be very cost effective for the system and for patients. And that's really the hurdle that we have to demonstrate in autoimmune. Interesting. Yeah, well, super interesting stuff, and, and I appreciate how kind of broadly knowledgeable you are here. Uh, but uh, thanks so much for chatting. Yeah, thank you.